Hi, this is Rachel, and I wanted to respond to some emails because I've been getting emails where people are asking me about boundaries and or they're bringing up the word boundary. So I wanted to put some ideas out there to consider how to deal with your boundaries or just some ideas that might open your mind to um, work through them with people. So I made notes. This isn't the typical boundary video so the first thing is to find the right person that fits your boundaries you know ask them what they want they need and their rules you can see if they're evasive you can see what they won't answer you can feel their boundaries out in that way is there something they can benefit from if they're hiding something or being deceitful because being deceitful is not putting enough information out there for somebody else to make a proper choice. Are they avoidant? Are they avoiding questions or answers? Do they avoid answering any questions? This will tell you whether they're the right match for you or not. It's easier for these people to overstep your boundary and care less. Um... It, they're not going to be the type of person that's going to match with your needs and your boundaries. If it's somebody that says the opposite of what you want from the beginning, or they have a different plan or idea, have a different goal, they're a poor match and they're not very compatible. People with boundary issues will live off of sentences or empty words. They go off of action. Or, you should go off of how they act and how they treat you. Not what you think they think and not what they say, but how they treat you. You know, um, if they uh, overstep your boundary and they got a lot of excuses of why they should do it their way or, you know, you should just know who they are. Or it was just a mood or it won't happen again. You know... Um, don't live off of those sentences. You have a boundary and that boundary comes first. Don't worry about where they're at and whatever. Worry about your boundary and don't live off of the words or sentences that it will change. It has to be by the action and by how they treat you. A boundary issue is value systems. Um, some people might value material stuff and the next person doesn't. You know, so like if you have somebody who is very material versus somebody who's not, there's going to be a lot of um, boundary issues because the value system is so um, extreme. You have one extreme to the, another. And if you look at a value system, you can your value system and somebody else's, you can see like the distance between the extremes and the more extreme there is, the more distance, there's more of a gap that's going to have to be worked through for you guys to come to some kind of compromise or agreement where you're still getting your boundaries met and they're still getting theirs met. Emotions is a way to feel if a boundary's been crossed or will be crossed. You can have signs of being agitated, annoyed. You can become fearful angry sad you know and when you feel these things that's saying that something is not right it's no different than having a cut on your hand and the cut hurts your body is uh releasing pain to let you know that something's not right in that area that it needs attention now nowadays there's a lot of people that are like hey i'm gonna get mine before you get yours you know it needs to be mutual um, you don't need to prove yourself for them to value you. If they got to get theirs first, you don't need to prove yourself for them to value you. You have needs. You have boundaries. They will be met just like you're meeting theirs. You know, um, a lot of times they notice your value when it's too late. And it's hard to have boundaries with them without conflicts. If you own property... And it had, you know, you know your property, and other people know that it's not theirs. It doesn't belong to them. But somebody keeps coming by and has an and has a dog, 
you know, pooping on your yard. If you don't say anything, that's a guarantee that they'll keep doing it because you don't care about your boundary. Yes, you know, you own the property. You shouldn't have to say anything and they should know better. But a lot of people have to de defend their boundaries regardless. So, um, you shouldn't have to deal with that, especially with adults. You need to find somebody who's a better match for your boundaries once again. But this time, it's like, if you're, if you're, uh, honest businessman, um, you don't try to, um, as much as possible be around somebody who's a con man. And if you're somebody who wants something serious, you don't want to mess with somebody who doesn't take anything serious or everything is a joke. Um, your complaints will always reveal your boundaries because there's a boundary issue and a lot of complaints and a lot of complaints have to do with wanting to work through stuff. So, sometimes you need time to sort, sort stuff out away from other people because if you're trying to figure out what boundaries been crossed if you're trying to figure out how to cope with it if you're trying to figure out the next step with this issue and you're around the person who crossed the boundary or is having issues with your boundaries they're gonna talk to you and distract you so much with what they want because they have needs to get met it's easier to sort stuff out and see where you feel, what you feel and where you're at and what exactly is happening. If you're able to step away from this person, you can go to a movie, you can go for a walk, a drive, go fishing, get hobbies, go play pool, darts, you know, go swimming, go to the gym. Confidence and self-esteem. You know, if you have confidence and self-esteem, you have better and stronger boundaries. If someone has a war and they're um, not confident in their boundaries in war, if they're not, don't have esteem in their um, war, you know, it'll be weak without the confidence. And weakness is where a boundary will be broken or crossed. It might not be somebody you can cut out of your life. Family, schoolmates, co-workers, and partners. So, in that way, you would have to show them by your action more than your words. So, talk less, distance yourself, use more facial expressions, and body language. Sometimes we can get more across to somebody when we're using less words. When we're showing them how we feel. We want them to show us they're respecting and listening to our boundaries. Um, so, it's the same. Um, make it easier on yourself to keep the boundary. So if you're around somebody and every time you go out, this person wants you to pay, make it easy on yourself and just don't bring them. If they start to ask questions, just say, you know, I'm on a budget or I don't want to pay for somebody else. And when I can't pay, it makes it feel me feel uncomfortable and awkward. Um, don't feel bad about you know, your boundaries and don't feel bad about keeping them. It's your life and you wouldn't even need boundaries without your life. You know, you need boundaries to be safe and healthy. When you're talking about a boundary to somebody, whether it's being um, just now addressed or it's being addressed again, it needs to be clear and address one or two boundaries not 10 or 15 boundaries. That's too much to expect out of somebody. You know, boundaries are about your needs, not theirs. So don't worry. When you go to get a job, when you go to get a job, a lot of times they have job description um, lists. And they're telling you that that's their boundaries and rules. Um, and they don't feel bad. That's their needs that need to get met, you know. It's about your needs, not their needs. That's your boundaries for you. 
And an important thing about boundaries is, especially when you have to bring it up more than once, is to be vulnerable. Because if you can't be vulnerable, then you're hiding something. And that makes you involved in deception. You know, which isn't going to help anybody. So I hope that the people who have been emailing me about boundaries in the last week and a half um, will get something out of this video. Thank you.